This is the continuing story of Peyton Blake. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington, Carson's daughter, Allison, disappeared from the family home a few hours ago. Her bed not slept in. To Elliot, one man may have the answer. A young man who has been a part of Allison's life for the past two years, Rodney Harrington. Hello, Rodney. Oh, hello, Mr. Carson. Have you talked with Allison? You mean since last night? No, I mean this morning, since she left the house. She, she just took off. Uh, just like that, and I thought maybe you might have talked with her. Oh. She used to like to go down to uh, the point and, and, and watch the sailboats. She said that was, a, that was the perfect image of freedom. But that was before. Before what? Uh, well, that was before her accident. I, I don't think she goes down there much anymore, not, uh, not after she got hit by that car. Rodney, I make you very uncomfortable lately, don't I? I don't know what you mean, Mr. Carson. I think you know what I mean. Well, you, uh, you do make me feel like I've got two heads once in a while. You feel like I want to knock one of them off. Well, well, I know how you feel. And I know how you feel about Allison. I know something about Allison's feelings for you. You know, most women, they like to have someone to to lean on when the going gets rough. And I think Allison would like to lean on you. But you've made it very plain that uh, you don't want to be tied down just now. Look, look, I'm not trying to twist your arm or anything. I, mean, I don't know whether you two are right for each other. That's something between you and Allison. Only time can tell that. But until you or some other man proposes marriage to Allison and takes Allison out of my house, then I'm the man that is, has to be concerned with her welfare. And I am very much concerned. But. That doesn't mean that I'm angry with you. So level with me, please. Now, what happened between you and Allison last night? Well, I, when I went up to the nursery, she'd been crying. Yes, yes, I know that. But what, what were you talking about? Well, we talked about a lot of things. I, I just tried to, to uh, say things that might make her happier. Like what, specifically? Well, Miss Carson, I don't remember exactly just anything that wasn't depressing. Look, Rodney, I don't mean to press, but after you left, Allison cried her eyes out all night long. Uh, don't you remember anything she said, anything at all that might give us some idea where she is? Oh, I don't. I don't. She was very much upset about what happened to, to Ann Howard. And what she remembered about it. But think, Rodney, there, there must be something. Look, I'm just as much concerned about her as you are. Yes, I know you're concerned about Allison. Everybody's concerned about Allison. The thing is, what are we going to do about it? What should we do about it? Well, I suppose that depends on how much you care about what happens to her. I mean, it's one thing to say you love her, and it's another thing to prove it. I think you know what you should have to do. I know what I have to do. Elliot, Allison's tired. She's had a severe shock. I mean, when she... when she found Anne, and I'm finding someone like that, so... so close to you, I'm not about to go handing out advice on something that could change your whole future, without talking to her extensively. Mike, I've got to have your professional advice. 
I told him. I know you don't have any time for Allison. I didn't say that. What I said was I'm not about to make a decision on anything like this without having time to consider it. We may not have a lot of time, Michael. We may not have any time at all. Don't you understand? I don't know where Allison is. I don't know what she's doing. All I know is that she left her home, she left her family, with what she thought was the weight of the world on her shoulders. Don't you call me? Uh, no, thanks. How long has it been since you've had anything but cough in your stomach? I don't know. Did you bother to go to bed last night? Look, will you stop it, please? I don't need lectures now on physical fitness. Well, I need you right now, Mike, and I need 100% of you. I'm sorry, Ellie. Mike, I know what you're doing. I try the same thing, just to lose myself, to grind away around the clock like a machine, but even machines wear out. I know how much Ann meant to you, but you can't go on like this. You've got to get some rest. When is your next surgical appointment? Tomorrow in the morning. You see, I'm not the only one who needs you. There are lots of people in this town depending on you. You know, Mike, us laymen sometimes tend to think that you doctors are a little bit more than human, and sometimes you are. But right now, my dear friend, you are very human and very, very tired. You go home and get some rest. I'm going to drive down that beach road. I've got to find out. Elliot, just call me, Mike, when you're rested. I think I'd be dumb enough to try to break out of here. I really appreciate you stopping by. What do you want, Lee? There's something I've got to tell you. You don't have to tell me anything. Yes, I do. I've got to tell you the truth. You sure you know how? Whatever you say to me, I, I know I have coming, Stephen. What are you trying to sell me, then? You, honest Lee Weber? For months. You've been investigating what happened 17 years ago. For months, you've been trying to prove that Ann Howard didn't push my brother off the bluff, right? That doesn't make any difference now. Ann's dead. It does make a difference. I want you to hear it from me now. I pushed my little brother off the bluff and made him blind. That's the, the horrible, stinking truth about me. I was so jealous of my little brother that I blinded him and blamed Ann for it. All these years, I said that she did it. Convinced a lot of people that, that she was the monster that was really inside of me. I kept blaming her for it because I didn't want Chris to find out. I hated Anne because she kept trying to find out the truth. It was all for nothing. Chris figured it out, that it was me. And I lost the only person in this world that I ever cared for. Why are you telling me this? Because I want you to know the truth about me. Why? I want you to trust me. Defend me in court. Defend you? You think the confession you just made will make me decide to take your case? Look, I level with you. And you put me down for it. Well, what do you expect me to do? Walk into the DA's office and plead with him to let you go? Right now, your admission is 17 years ago. You pushed your brother off the bluff. is about as significant as if you confessed that when you were a kid, you stole a dollar out of your mother's purse. Now, I don't doubt it's sincere, but that's all it is. You're not sitting in this jail because of what you did to your brother. I didn't kill Ann Howard. 
Oh, I know. I've heard about your alibi. You were home when it happened. You were home and your wife swears to it. No, I wasn't home. I forced Sandy to tell that story. I wasn't home. I lied. I was drinking. That's the truth. I was riding down by the old beach road, that's the truth, but I was looking for my brother, not Ben. I was riding down by the bluff, I heard a scream. A terrible scream. I ran to the edge of the bluff and she was lying there. She was dead. I knew she was dead. Do you realize what you're saying? I don't care what I'm saying, it's the truth. That's all I have left to do now is to tell the truth. Go on. I knew that if I hung around, they'd lock me up in a minute because of the bad time that I had given Anne. So I shoved off and I went home. And you didn't see Anne at any time before that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Earlier in the, in the day, I followed her around for a while. You followed her? I know how bad it sounds for me, but it's the truth. I followed her to the Peyton house. I wanted to blow off some steam at her for coming back and ruining everything. But when she came out of the house, she was crying. I knew if I said one word to her, she, she'd become hysterical. I was afraid she'd start screaming or something. So I gave it up and, and went looking for Chris. And you're positive that Anne was very upset when she came out of the Peyton house. Yes, why should I lie about that? That's right, why should you lie about that? It's the truth, Mr. Corden. I don't know what happened in that house. But when she came out, she was... Did anyone follow Anne out of the house? No. You're sure? I'm positive. Do you know what my mother looks like? Yeah, sure. And you're positive you didn't see her? Coming after Anne? No, I, I didn't see your mother, but why... All right, all right. So that's your story, Lee. It's the truth, Mr. Court. Suppose I tell you that I'm buying what you say. Every word of it. Suppose I say I trust you in this. What makes you think you can trust me? Well, let's just say that I know that if you take on my case, you'll win. Because you're a lawyer, Mr. Cord. And if you get into that courtroom, you have to win. You're a shrewd judge of human nature, aren't you, Lee? Well, let's see how shrewd you are. I'll take your case. Thanks.